From a lifetime of love and now a growing fear for our natural world, my challenge is to climb some of the world's biggest and most beautiful trees, all in the name of promoting reforestation. We have all played a part in this destruction, and now we all need to play a part in its regeneration. We only have one world and the future of it and all its inhabitants is in our hands. So come climb with me as I seek out spectacular specimens and spruce social change. I am Kit and welcome to Kit Climbs. So I have to admit, I don't know anything about climbing. I don't know anything about rock climbing or belaying or relaying or all of the other egging. I've always loved climbing trees as a kid, but in terms of all of the harnesses and all of the gear that's required and the safety measures, I didn't know anything. So I spent the last sort of six weeks trying to get my head wrapped around the safety side of stuff and also work out the right kind of system. So I've just got a really basic climbing setup. Um, I think for content reasons, it's gonna be hilarious watching me try with a really basic system. Um, let's have a look at what I've put together and pack things up and get on the road. First thing off, we have a harness. This one's actually great um, because it's specifically made for tree climbing. I think particularly for when you're walking up on the tree limbs and stuff, it gives you a lot more movability. So super glad to have found this, good start. Next, rope. Pretty important tool again when it comes to climbing a couple of lanyards. I like the idea of kind of getting free of the main rope when I'm up in the trees and just using the lanyards to, to connect to branches and kind of keep me always connected to the tree but allowing me a little bit more freedom to kind of do some branch climbing around throughout the, the trees. Um, first aid kit stocked up just with sort of basic stuff and mostly just little bits of hydrating things and also uh, who knows if I'm going to get bitten or stung or, or whatever up there, so just going to keep that on me just in case. Some gloves to protect my handsies, so that'll be super handy. A child sock with a bunny rabbit. A pulley. Maybe I should explain a little bit more about the sock. This here is a throw line. The sock, um, the idea is to put some rocks inside the sock, tie it off at the end, and then you throw the line up into the tree over a branch and then connect that to the main rope and then pull the main rope through so to get up in the trees. <laughs> that makes a little bit more sense. Uh, a little bit of protective eyewear. I have a knife, um, it kind of scares me to open a little bit. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about carrying a knife, but it's also something I feel maybe is important when working with ropes. So I'm gonna keep that on me for the time being, but also I don't think I can travel with a knife like this. And some shoes. Some shoes to protect my footsies. Shoes? Yeah, so that's it. That's pretty much the entire set. So let's just pack it up. It's the Honda 125 click. <laughs> Probably about 10 horsepower of goodness. And it's me. And one, two, three. Definitely uh, a lot more easy riding these things <laughs> without three bags strapped to you. All right, here we go. Baby. We're just on the outskirts of the city and already starting to see what is the cancer of Southeast Asia with that there being the rubber tree and obviously the other big one being the palm oil tree. Uh, 91 brother. That'll get me where I need to go. Well, I've just filled up with a bit of fuel and uh, gonna grab a little snack. But wow, oh, I mean, when you think about Thailand, I think this is the kind of uh, formations, especially Southern Thailand, that you'd be um, expecting to see. Uh, pretty flower. A sanger in my belly and a little bit of a rest for my tushy. And good to go again. Beautiful day for it. Few more hours ahead, so let's do it. Okay, start. It's really warm here in Thailand today. Ah, oh, so much better.
driving at the ferry. is dying very quickly um, so I think by the time I get to my accommodation in about 10 minutes it's going to be too dark so what I'm gonna do is settle in there and I will see you guys in the morning so, um, really just gonna go and have a little bit of uh, a look around town and get my bearings and then maybe go for a swim too hey kitty what do you think Alrighty, let's just go have a little quick things. Now, as you can see, I'm not exactly right in the middle of town. Alright, Main Street. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go for a cheeky explore just in there. Such a common thing now that I'm finding all throughout Southeast Asia. Just these empty shells. The waste is just incredible. This has been here for a while. I mean, I really love the, the fact that nature's taking back over again. This is where my main curiosity for these buildings comes from. It gives me hope for, for the future of the planet, even if humans aren't gonna be here. Look at this shoe. Just molded into the ground. Another side of the good in there. I've seen quite a few places around through Southeast Asia that were obviously affected when COVID hit. Um, it's hard to know. It doesn't look like it's been here that long. Who needs to climb trees when you can just go up in abandoned buildings and get to the top of the main? Gorgeous, but yeah, what a waste. What an absolute waste. It's particularly environmental damage that must have occurred just to create this shell of a building that... Uh, it's not looking like it's going to be able to be salvaged, that's for sure. It's really depressing, come on humans. We have to do better than that, surely. Okay, so I have set a big challenge for myself, but I'm incredibly excited to be doing it because it's all for the name of reforestation and restoration because at the end of the day, um, if you're not restoring and you are consuming, you are part of the problem. And we are all guilty and responsible. And the whole point of me being out here and doing this is to, to raise people's awareness for I mean, not only the beauty of our natural world, um, but the, for the fact that each and every single one of us that can be should be either getting out there and involved in restoration projects or funding restoration projects. And even just sort of in our own backyards, learning about the importance and the beauty of nature. So, yeah, thank you so much for sticking around and I will be back next week.